Friends, life is too short to not take a day off of work when you're feeling inspired to do photography and not a day of work. And today is one of those days. And it's not, it's not because of this box, although I will be using what's in this box today. It's because we've had dark and dreary, um, rainy days here in Southern Utah for the last week or more. And it's, it has ruined our plans a couple times. I, sh I'm, I can't complain because we need said rain, but today's gonna be the first sunny day we've had in, in a while. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm taking the day off work, moving some things around so that I can go and, and just do some photography, just, just some me time. I'm gonna take this along with me. This is the, the Fuji X-S10, which I know it's been out for a bit here. I'm a little behind the curve. There's probably been so many good reviews from so many YouTube personalities. So I'm not gonna really review it. I'm sure there are some better ones out there, but I'll take it with me and see how it goes. Wow, that grip is, that is a substantial grip for such a small camera. I did not expect that. I honestly, I know like nothing about this camera. I haven't watched a single review. Um, so I'll talk about it a little bit. But the point of today is to go, to be inspired, to take some photos. And I won't just be using this. I'll also be using probably more often for the photos. I'll, I'll be using my GFX 50R with my Mamiya um, 80 millimeter 28 lens. This is pretty much my setup for most of the types of shots that I'm going for these days when it comes to rural landscape, um, rural decay, um, and for for like the A shots, I guess, or the main shots. And then for those backup shots, not the backup, I guess, the other type or the other style of shots that I like to get will be from this guy. And where is it? My favorite lens for the Fuji X system. 16 millimeter 1.4. I don't know where it is, which is not a good sign. I will find it and I will mount it to this. I will be vlogging with this and that beautiful lens the whole time. And these will be the two cameras that I take and yeah, blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's go. And here we are in Logandale, Nevada. Pretty early on a weekday. I, uh, I don't like mornings and I don't typically get up for mornings, certainly not for photography. Uh, I'm not a typical landscape photographer. Um, the only reason I'm up this early this time is because uh, during the winter months I have a health issue that makes me not sleep. Those of you who have been followers of the channel for a while will know that I deal with that. And so when I can't sleep, this is what we do. We do photography. So, um, sunrise is yet to come up, but I saw this nice little shot here. And we're going to start here this morning, see what we can get. We'll start with a GFX 50R on a tripod since we're low light. I don't use the tripod much because usually I shoot in sunny 16 conditions. Um, but before the sun comes out, we'll make use of the tripod. Alright, here we go. So I think we're at a 5.6 for this shot. ISO 250. Um, eighth to second. And got the shot. I like the composition here at the uh, four thirds um, aspect ratio, but that's not why I shoot with the GFX 50R. Usually I like to get that um, 65 by 20. Uh, for aspect ratio and I'll try that here. The problem is that uh, it's it is a busy highway here and the place where I would need to get that shot is in the middle of the road, but I might try to do that um, because traffic is pretty slow during these wee hours. So we'll try to get that shot, but I'll do that af off camera. Well, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Which of those two compositions did you like better? I tend to like, obviously, I tend to like the panoramic um, aspect ratio a lot more, so I'll probably like that one more, but 
I'll wait to really form an opinion until I see those on the computer. But yeah, let me know which one you like, which one you prefer. And in the meantime, we have another, another scene here. We've got a train, you can see off in the distance there. Um, looks like it's preparing to leave. So hopefully it doesn't leave before sunrise, which is what I'm waiting for, to get a nice soft glow on it. Um, yeah, and I'll get a, another panoramic shot of the train just waiting for that sun. Um, hopefully it doesn't leave before it gets here. So I only have one lens for my GFX 50R right now. Well, I technically have two, but the wide angle lens I don't like. So I only use this Mamiya right now. Um, I, I do plan to get other lenses, but this one's just been, it's been great. It's been the only one that I've really needed for the type of shots that I want until right now where I don't quite have enough room <laughs> to back up to get this, uh, this engine all in one frame. But that's okay. We'll stitch together a bit of a panoramic and we'll get even more megapixels out of this GFX 50R, but only slightly. I can almost get it all in frame, so I'm just gonna just pan a little bit. I don't like to add too much distortion um, and to go too crazy with stitching. I prefer to get my panoramic shots all in in one frame with the 65 to 24 ratio. That's why I shoot with the 50R medium format in general. I do like this little fence with this wildlife preserve. Uh, I'll see while I wait for that sun to come up I'm gonna see if I can get a some sort of nice texture shot along this fence somewhere with the uh, 1614 on this uh, SX10. All right that sun is now up we're gonna get that light glinting off this thing. So, still got those nice clouds in the background. So we, looks like everything's coming together for a pretty good shot. So, let's get it. There's a sign here that I love. It's advertising at its best. There's some crows sitting on it. It's beautiful. I just don't know how to compose it. Gotta figure it out quick before these, oh, they're not crows. I don't know what kind of birds those are. I don't know birds, but we're gonna get a shot of it as quick as we can here. four-wheeler was like one of the best things I've ever seen. I love that. I love advertisement like that. In a town where there's only one ATV rental, they don't have uh, the advertising competition. And so, you know, stick an old 80s quad up on a sign. Why not? It works. And it's, I think it's beautiful. So, see if I can get another few shots here in this little town center. So there's some interesting things, details maybe, in these storefronts. So we'll take a break from the 50R and those kind of more architectural shots and get some more close and wide shots, which I also like. And we'll take these with the SX10 and the 16mm 1.4. All right, my friends, um, we've been sh photographing for a little while here, but 
It's time for a little bit of a break and uh, a chance for me to reflect on the mysteries of life, the mysteries of the universe, the mysteries of the SX10, as I promised to give XS10. Did I say SX10? I keep doing that. XS10. Um, I promise to give you a little bit of my thoughts as I photograph with this today, do some video with it. So let and then my battery ran out. Right then, my last battery of the morning, between the cold day and the fact that the, the XS10 burns through batteries faster than I expected, I did run out, didn't have time to share my thoughts. So while we wait for those batteries to charge again, I, I did go out and shoot more with a 50R. Here are the shots that I got, I hope you enjoy them. More on the XS10 later in the video. We have had some clouds roll in, and I don't, I don't particularly like uh, clouds and cloudy days. In uh, when I'm doing rural architecture, I like, I like sunny 16. I like severe clear lighting. So I left that town, but those clouds right now are providing some really nice dappled lighting across these these mountains that I saw off the freeway in Nevada on I-15. So I pulled off and I'm gonna hike out and try to find some interesting foreground and get a shot of these distance hills uh, with that beautiful dappled light. So yeah, let's go see what we can capture. I do have to hurry just a little bit because those clouds look gray and they're coming this way. So I've, I'm only going to have these, these nice sort of uh, dappled lights, I don't know, for maybe 20 minutes. So it's time to look for a composition out here in this wasteland. The problem I'm having is that I think these are called cholas, these large uh, cactus type things. I think they're cholas. They're so tall that they break the horizon, even break above the mountains. So it's not providing foreground interest as much as it's providing distraction from the mountains. If I could get up on them a little bit, then maybe it would work, but just struggling a little bit to find the foreground interest that, uh, that I was hoping to find. But we'll get there, we'll find it. So that's our light gone, just about. A little bit left and maybe I'll, there's this rotting wood so I'm gonna try to get, I, I mostly got photos with the GFX 50R, I realized this. So I'm gonna take the XS10 off the tripod here, get a few stills in this area. And then maybe we could take a break and talk about the XS10 for those of you who are interested in hearing my thoughts. I do have surprisingly a lot of thoughts, way more than I thought I would about this camera. So I'm excited to tell you all about those. Let me get some shots of this first. I am really loving the patterns created right here in this chola plant, this kind of, these three swirls that point back towards the rest of this decaying structure. I just think this is such a beautiful, it's almost like these uh, golden ratios um, pointing towards the rest of the tree. So I made my way over to a little haunt I know about, a uh, some ruins of an old um, hotel, resort thing uh, that is absolutely destroyed, gutted, uh, lit on fire a couple times, and often the location of uh, raves and um, other illicit activities. <laughs> anyway, I like this location and we'll probably do a little bit of photography here with the SX10, XS10. We'll do some photography with that after I finish my little spiel here 
and finish it up with that. Show you the, some steals that I'm able to get with just that. I won't be shooting with a 50R because this is the just the type of location I like for the 16 millimeter 1.4. Um, that really up close, tight, textured, shallow depth of field. I love it. But let's talk about this camera. There are a few things that I really like about this camera. I actually have a lot more to say about it than I thought I would um, after just shooting with it for a day. This is just my kind of my first impressions um, as I kind of co compare and contrast it to what I'm used to shooting with. We have to put it first in the perspective of all of Fuji's cameras and the way that they, the way that you use them, the um, the usability, I guess, or the ergonomics and the handling. Um, there's kind of two philosophies, I guess, if we were to put it in, in sort of uh, uh, dialectical opposition, whatever. Um, on one hand, we have a DSL, DSLR kind of uh, uh, paradigm, right? Where aperture and shutter are front and back dials, ISO, a push of the button is what allows you to change ISO. That's kind of the DSLR style. And then you've got Fuji's kind of what they've brought back, which is more of an analog feel where there's a, where the exposure triangle, each thing gets its own dedicated analog labeled style dial. Now it's not analog, obviously. These are digital settings manipulated by a dial that looks analogish, um, but they're, they're different ways to approach the usability of a camera. Uh, we all know that and uh, whoever, you, depending on who you are, you're gonna love that or hate that about Fuji. Um, and I personally love it for photography. Um, so what you have to realize is the XS10 goes on to the DSLR side of things, right? It, it adopts the, the, um, the front and back non-labeled dials for aperture shutter. ISO is a button, right? Not a dedicated dial. That's different than the X-T4. So while on paper, a lot of things look similar, um, the, the big difference is going to be that usability aspect. Um, now, that used to be a big problem, the analog style for us hybrid shooters. For those of you who do shoot video and photos a lot, um, that was a problem back X-T3, prior to that X-T30, those, those cameras, because when you, sh you switched from video to photo, it was a big old pain in the butt to switch all those settings because there are not a lot of, of shared settings that you can use if you want to do both of them right. If you want to do photography right and video right in a run and gun situation, you've got to be able to switch back and forth very quickly. And those platforms did not lend itself to that. So X-T4 solved that for us, for us hybrid shooters. We were so grateful for that, where a lot of you photographers hated it. You hate the flip screen. You hate those features that us video people appreciate. But here's the thing. I, I don't want to use the term like vlogging, that this is a good vlogging camera because um, while that's true, it is. For me, it's most important that I have a platform that will capture stills and photos for my family. That's what I care about. You guys, you're awesome. This YouTube thing's fun, but you're not the most important thing in the world to me. My family is and capturing memories are. So this camera and the X-T4 are both perfect for that, right? Because I can, I can see myself with my family if I need to, flip that screen around. Um, but most importantly, I can get back and forth between video and photo on one device quickly and it's it's wonderful it really does make travel um, experiences with the family events all of that much easier to do so the difference with the xs10 over many fuji devices is the mode dial the addition of the kind of dslr style mode dial like i said and i don't mind it too much for hybrid shooting the way i use it because i actually don't like going from like manual photography, the M, all the way to the video and back. Every time I need to switch is I just use C4 for my photo settings. You can, you can set these dials to either remember when you sh uh, switch them and always update, or you can save them to always be kind of a default. And I just have it be whatever my last setting was for C4. But I go from video to C4 and that's really all I ever use um, this command dial, or so far, since I've only been using this for a day, but I think that's the only way that I would use this dial to switch between video and C4 for photo. So that's the difference. And so depending on what you prioritize first, if you're a photographer first, video second, and you like 
an analog type feel or nod towards the analog. I'm gonna steer you towards the X-T3, X-T4 side of things, even though those are a little bit more expensive. You'll have a more pleasant photography experience with those types of devices. But if um, you need video first, if you are a creator, or if you are capturing hybrid moments, and you, um, and you like the DSLR style also, if you, either of those fit you, then you're going to really like the S XS10. And I'd say I would probably steer you more towards that and save some money while you're at it. Um, so overall, that's kind of where I would place this camera and who I would say it was for thinking big picture. There's one thing I really like more about the XS10 than the X-T4, and that is that the mic jack is up above the flip screen. So that means that the flip screen does not interfere with the, where, where you plug the mic in. And that's a big problem on the X-T4 because I've usually got a mic plugged in, but it's right there in front of the, the screen that's meant to flip around so that I can see myself and, and it's kind of fiddly and I, I kind of hate it. And I love that this is up and out of the way. So that's really cool. I love that they kind of move that up. The problem with the mic jack, and maybe it's just this copy or maybe it's a combination of tolerances between this copy and my mic jack is that it's kind of hard to push the mic jack all the way in. And I may be the only one that have experienced that. You, if, if you're worried about that, do some research. The problem with that is that I have plugged it in maybe three or four times during this adventure, re hit record and talked blah, 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 blah for a while and found that I, I didn't have audio because yeah, it wasn't plugged all the way in. And that was a huge point of frustration. And, and I haven't had that problem on like the X-T4, or even the X-T3. So it, or it may just be that it's new, it may just be me, but that's something that I noticed right off. But aside from that, I love the placement of the jack. It's so cool. I really love the shutter sound as well. And, and this is gonna sound weird, but I am kind of a shutter sound snob. It's got depth to it, it's got richness. I, I almost, hear the harmonic overtones when that shutter button is fired. I know it sounds weird, but I love it. Next thing I don't like about it is that it chews through batteries um, more than the X-T3 does, I think. I mean, I'm, I'm going off of, um, this is anecdotal evidence, I haven't done a side-by-side, -side, but it appeared to me that I ripped through, just tore, shredded through my batteries this morning and I had to plug them into the cigarette lighter in the car to get them charged up again and take a break. Um, just to, to get to where we are right now. And, uh, you know, the X-T4 doesn't have that issue as much with the IBIS because it's got a, a larger battery capacity. But this, this guy is gonna chew through batteries. And I think part of the problem is that IBIS is always on, or I have, I think it's set by default to always be IBISing, even when you're not, um, like, shooting. And, and that, I think that makes some sense with photography, but for video, that should be off by default. Like it shouldn't be trying to stabilize thing unless you're actually, you know, filming. Um, but that can be turned off. I know that it can, I just didn't do it. So that might be part of it. So battery management, that's probably my bad, but um, out of the box, keep in mind, this is gonna chew through batteries and you need to be aware of that. The other one is related to IBIS also, and that it has a bug. And I'll show you footage I got on my phone of it kind of freaking out. It's done this several times. I don't exactly know why, and I'm guessing this is probably well known. Mo many of you watching this probably know all about this because usually when there are problems like this, it gets spread through the vlogosphere and everyone tells each other. And I haven't watched any reviews, so I've missed out on that. But in case nobody's picked up on it, there's a bug with the IBIS kind of freaking out. And I don't know exactly what triggers it. I'll have to go and experiment. Um, and you may already, again, already be aware of that. And maybe there's a firmware that's already fixed it and I just don't know about it. In which case, I'll probably delete all of what I'm saying right here. But if I didn't delete it, then it means that I haven't really seen very many people talking about it and that it's still a problem. So that's, that's a pretty big problem, but it's one that I would expect Fuji would be able to fix. But anyway, I will try to track down why it's doing that. Maybe it's a combination of just what I'm using. Um, uh, if, if, if it's isolated to just me. 
and I'll check back later, maybe do a more thorough review of this camera. But those are all my thoughts initially. In general, I would have absolutely no hesitation whatsoever using this camera as a hybrid shooter, as my camera every day. It is absolutely a viable alternative to the X-T4 in just about every way, unless you just can't abide the battery consumption. Other than, other than that, you can work around everything else and it's, uh, it's gonna work great, I think. Um, really excited about this camera. I like that big grip too. I forgot to mention that. I like that big grip. The X-T30, X-E3, the grip is not as chunky. Um, doesn't bother me too much. Like I'm okay without a big chunky grip, but it is nice. And it doesn't feel too big because the camera is rather diminutive. Okay, that's all my thoughts. Thank you for watching. Um, and I'm gonna now end with just a few shots that I get around these parts before I head on out back to home. So enjoy those shots. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys again in a, a little while soon, hopefully. I haven't been doing as many videos. I have a lot to tell you guys. There's a lot that I wanna say. I have about four videos that I wanna, like, yeah, there's a lot going on and I need, to, I need to do a better job of getting these videos out, so I will do that. I'm excited about some things to tell you, but until then, remember to do good with your cameras, and we'll talk to you again real soon.